never good in busy, busy places. It's like an oxymoron, isn't it? Because you, you, you start your journey as someone who wants to be left alone. So you go to a gym where it's quiet so you can focus on yourself. Then you build a body that gets recognized by people and carries you to the biggest stage. Guys and girls, chilling in the garden. I never come out here, but I should. I think it's something about living, living in like more of an, not urban, but more urban than where say like Evan and the guys live. You decide not to really sit outside. You feel like you're spoiled for space over there. I don't know if any of you have seen his garden. Lush green space where um, you go out there and you feel like you're not surrounded by anything. Whereas like here you kind of, I'll show you. Kind of got houses all around you. So you don't feel very private. So sometimes when you want to have a discussion or a talk, you don't feel like you're able to because you feel like people are listening in. Not that it matters because we're not talking about anything crazy, but just sitting down actually indoors after doing my cardio and breakfast. And um, I watched a video, some YouTuber, as many of you know or don't know, I'm kind of into other things as well. But this guy collects like action figures <laughs> and he was done a retrospective like video on some uh, old action figures slash toys from 1998 for a game called Resident Evil 2. Anyway, he was telling a story of how uh, during that time he was in hospital. You know, he was alone. He's, he was too old that his mother couldn't stay with him. And uh, he was really poorly. The one thing that he had, he was allowed to play his PlayStation. And uh, he was talking about these characters from this game and how, you know, because of them being present during a time where he was really ill and, you know, unwell and in need, these characters from this game, although to most of us or most people from the outside looking in are just the characters from a game, he was just saying how the memories he has of these characters, how fond they are because they were with him during a time of, I suppose, just need. They were like a, sur uh, like a, like a mother looking after him at night, keeping him entertained when he was in a place where he was uncomfortable. And that got me thinking like about the gym <laughs> and like how that, those characters in that game provided this, this young man with like a uh, sense of security and um, all these feelings. Uh, and it, it kind of resonated that I'm thinking about the gym. Going back in time to like when we were younger and when the gym kind of first made its appearance in our lives, why did it? And what was going on at the time when it did? What was it for us? And I was, you know, sitting and I was thinking, yeah, obviously I can only speak from my experience, but I can imagine that a lot of people's experiences are somewhat in tune with my own, which kind of was similar to what this guy's experience was with this game and these characters you know because when you're young and you're unsure and you maybe lack direction in life and you're kind of i don't know scared of the big unknown the gym is somewhere you can go to seek i suppose like familiarity and comfort and be grounded and and know that it's a constant you know whether you're just a young man or a young woman needing somewhere to go to get away from those feelings or you have a, like a high anxiety level where you're not good at being around a lot of people when you have to go somewhere quiet like the gym believe it or not gyms used to be quiet um and that's another part of this video actually the difference between now and then the gym was that for many people it's almost a parent you know it has a, a really strong affinity with some people and you know it's quite emotional like i had a you know a, a moment of thinking about bodybuilding a few months back i remember with my mrs yannicka and i was trying to explain why it's so hard to walk away and, you know, just call it a day on bodybuilding because it feels like you're turning your back on on someone who's done a lot for you. If you have a life like mine or any of the guys on this channel, you'll kind of see, I don't know, you'll kind of see that um, the one thing that we all have in common is that bodybuilding, <laughs> that's the coming, bodybuilding has provided us all with a life. When I was thinking about the thought of, like, walking away, because I always contemplate things like that, just because you should as a person, just figure out what you're doing and where you're going. I got emotional, I was like, because I remember like looking back at all the times where I've had problems in the outside world, the real world, and the gym has been the one thing that I've been able to like go to and override those feelings of, whether it be sadness, anxiety, fear. The gym was always that thing, you conquer fears in the gym, you conquer all sorts of things in the gym. So yeah, with that being said, again, referring back to what I was saying, Times are obviously very different now. Like, well, I go to a gym now because I have bad time being around a lot of people. I have an anxiety. I think that wouldn't work out now because gyms are so busy compared to they used to be. You, you honestly used to be able to go to a gym to get away from people. Um, now it's like obviously very, very different. I think if you go to a gym now, what you'll come to understand is 
they're probably the most busy place on the planet because the gym industry is blown. Everybody trains now. Um, and, and, and then that raises the question of this video, again, this topic is, are the people that train now, are they there, I wonder, do they have the same feelings as we did? Are they there to escape and hide from some things that bother them or to face fears? Is the gym parenting, you know, parenting in them or in some regard? Or is it really just black and white now? Is it that just, okay, it's good to train? So let's train. It just makes me realize how complicated like bodybuilding was for people like me. <laughs> it, it was never, I was never like, oh, let's just go to the gym and train. It wasn't about that. There was issues that needed to be fixed and I couldn't find answers. And the only place I could kind of concentrate, I suppose, and find anywhere close to an answer is in the gym environment. I find like gym's hard to go into now because um, I always was quite insular and I was very, um, and not like super anxious, but never good around crowds, never good in busy, busy places. It's like an oxymoron, isn't it? Because you, you, you start your journey as someone who wants to be left alone. So you go to a gym where it's quiet so you can focus on yourself. Then you build a body that gets recognized by people and carries you to the biggest stage on the planet. Not everybody, but now a lot of people know who you are. So you've kind of undone what you were set to do, which is just keeping to yourself. <laughs> Uh, and you know, and then you go to like the Olympia, and you have to meet the fans, and you have all this, and it's, it's amazing, and it's brilliant, and I think it's uh, a beautiful thing, and I respect everybody that's ever taken time out, to say hello or shake a hand with me. But I'm still that awkward person, you know, still that person that locks himself in his house and puts on the PC or the PlayStation just because it means I can be alone. So there was that. There was that topic. Um, I, it's something that probably could be dived into a lot deeper, but it's a discussion really more than a topic because you know, speaking about that. I would love to know other people's thoughts and opinions so that this conversation go further because you can only go so far when it's just you blabbering on like I am on the phone. I, I am a thinker and, and it's very known to me that a lot of people are like, Jay, you just think too much. But I, I don't mind that. I kind of like who I am and I am who I am. And there's a lot of people that are similar as well and I kind of relate to them and I enjoy the conversations we have. So if you find yourself listening to this and you find yourself to be similar to me, cool. If you find yourself not, then that's cool. I'm totally down with that as well. Um, it could, like I say, just be as simple as you wake up, you go to the gym because you're like, yeah, I just want to get shit strong, massive physique, win shows. That, that, that is actually valid. You know, that is valid. It was just never my uh, intentions as such. Like, I always had an intention to be a champion, but it was weird. It was like my intentions were so fantastical as a child when I started bodybuilding. I always wanted to, like, change the world. I felt like I had to do something really important and... Obviously, when you're young and your physique is all you know and all you have, that feels like it's the most important thing because you don't know anything about what's going on outside. You're focused on yourself, so you, you feel like anything that you do is going to make a difference. And um, that was uh, that was a reason why I found that when I was younger, it was very easy to be disciplined because you truly had belief that your actions are going to change how the world operates. Even though it was a trivial pursuit of just literally changing your physique it's that important to you at a time and you're that you know hypnotized by your own passion and desire to excel and exceed that it it feels like if you do set out and finish the task you're going to literally change the the course of planet earth that's the difference between being someone that's you know earlier on and then later and then that's why i say to people you know later like it's really, it's really easy to bodybuild in the beginning. Like, I, I, I have no... If someone comes to me and they're two, three, four years deep in their bodybuilding, like, this is such a breeze, I love it. Like, I'm passionate, I'm enjoying it. One, I'm familiar with that feeling. I'm like, yeah, I remember that. <laughs> two, I'm almost like... I, I won't say it, but I'm also, I'm also like, in my head, I'm like, I know. But give it another 10 years and then see how, um, how easy it feels then. You know, I look at the other guys on here. There came a time for everybody on this podcast, uh, on this channel, sorry, some are still active, some aren't, but there comes a time where you can only do so much for so long until like that candle, you know, kind of burns. From a competitive standpoint, I think all of us will always lift weights and always train and look after ourselves. That's a given. But, you know, that competitive edge, um, that wanting to compare yourself and be a champion is, is definitely like a, for me at least, a younger mindset. I feel like the older I get, the less I require or desire comparison again which is an oxymoron in itself because you're a, you're a bodybuilder who makes a living out of being compared uh do i think you can be a great bodybuilder and feel the way i do yeah i think you can because I, I think i established this 
feeling last year and I still managed to, you know, win uh, a pro show and get to the Olympia on that that basis. So I don't think it's like a downfall of yourself. I don't think it stops you from being great. It just means that your reasons for trying have to be a little bit different. I look at it very logically now. So I'm like, OK, I've been like top 20 bodybuilder in the world for the last two years. It's a career and it, and it pays and it gives me opportunity to have a platform. So therefore, that has to be at the forefront of my reasoning. Obviously, yeah, you wish, if you could click your fingers and make it like I just said earlier, like where it felt like my, my decisions and my movements and my actions and achievements were life-changing, fuck me, I'd go back there like in a second. Nothing will compare to that. Nothing will give you the same desire in the gym as that. That's the shit that will get you in the gym getting under fucking seven plates and banging out reps until your fucking legs give out. The money or the opportunities ain't going to do the same. Because if it's not, it's not your heart your brain and your brain knows like from the logical standpoint yeah making money and being a, a successful bodybuilder is great but nothing beats fucking heart and that's why i always advise these younger guys getting into this like i'm like follow the fucking heart because heart has a lifespan man heart has a lifespan and it's the same with the motivation and discipline like the heart is motivation Discipline is the brain, and that comes later. And discipline is great, and it does show you to be a champion because it means you can succeed even longer than motivation lasted. But I don't think it's smart to forego super, super concentrating on the fact that at one point in your life, you're going to have this heart of a lion. And if you waste that, you'll never get that back again, especially if it's for a particular endeavor. You might get heart for something if you change what you're doing, of course, because the interest is there. You're only like a certain age and in, and in a certain state of influence once for a time. And if you don't monopolize that time and take advantage of that, you're going to make it a lot harder yourself to excel later, I think. Um, again, you know, I come on here and I talk and it's only from experience because someone could approach life totally different than me. They could achieve more. They could achieve less. They can achieve the same to a 180 perspective of me. They could be very similar. It doesn't matter. Like our decisions will take us somewhere and we could all end up very similar. We could all end up very different. And I don't think anything's right or wrong, but I do feel it important at least to express this so that you know that, oh, that could be my way or I can relate to that, or you don't relate to that, and either way you get something from this video. Uh, again, on this channel, like I know, I know I can sit here and I can talk about like exacts. Like, I was thinking to myself earlier, um, one thing I always take the piss out of some of my friends with is, is pendulum squats. I always laugh and I think they're, I personally think they're like one of the shittest squat variations possible out of everything that's available to us. It's only me, mate, touching the tail. Yeah, I think they're one of the, uh, the shittest squat variations. And I, I wind my friends up all the time. You know, they get my messages on WhatsApp and they're like, why, 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 why? And the truth is there is no answer, you know? So that's why I don't come on here and I don't say exacts and I don't say you shouldn't or should because there is no answer. That's just purely based off my life experience and my opinion on something. It's based on, <laughs> meow. It's based on intention and how I feel and knowing that I've tried many, many exercises in my life and some just don't feel as good as others. And that's like... Anything I say on here, it's just purely based on what do I think and what do I feel. It's not gospel. It's never going to be gospel. But it's my opinion. And I do think pendulum squats are pretty shit. I know that's a... Again, I, I, I can come on here and I can talk about anything. I can talk about... We're, we're on a platform where we can talk about gear, cycles, um, you know, supplements, nutrition, all of that. I love that. And I, and I know the guys enjoy doing that. Milos is, is exceptional when it comes to that kind of stuff. So is Evan, so is Chris. You name it. They all, they all know their shit. I don't know, I just like coming on here and giving a little bit of perspective about some other things. And obviously, if you don't enjoy it, do let us know. If it's just, you're not interested, let us know. I enjoy it. It's good for me to sit out in the garden, get some fresh air and chat with you guys. And get some of this stuff off my shoulders, because I think about it a lot. And if I don't put it into, like, verbal words, then it just kind of bakes in my head for a while until it becomes so at the forefront of my head and mind that it's almost a bit overbearing. So it's nice to talk about it. Um, so, yeah, guys, remember, I'll say it again. Make sure you check out all of our videos on AMA. We have our podcasts that go off, pop off uh, very often. You know, you have Juji on there, Chris Tuttle, Minos. You know, we're really fortunate to have these minds and incredible personalities here. And, um, you know, I'm always available. If you want to see more of me on there or if you want to see more of me on here, just hit me up. I do try and do at least one video a week. Um, I will be booking in with my videographer Maddie to do some training stuff on here as well when it comes to actual bodybuilding stuff if you want to know anything in particular do just message in advance what you want to see and what you want to know because then the team will put together uh, a proposed plan of particular subject matters whether it's something like instructional videos in the gym or how to perform a certain exercise whatever it may be I'm very happy to do that as well and again 
it will be based on my opinion, not necessarily fact, but maybe Shed's opinions are fact. <laughs> so, all right, guys, like, subscribe, um, share, tell your friends about us, and I will catch you probably in about a week's time. And uh, once again, appreciate you spending 20 minutes with me in the garden. You take care, guys.